We're back with our final segment here with Sean. We have got uh, a movie out that's uh, doing really well in the box office, but how is it doing critically? We're going to let you know for you right now. It's X-Men Apocalypse. And, Sean, this is the third film in the new X-Men yeah, trilogy. The, the sort of refresh they started with X-Men First Class mm -hmm. a few years ago, followed up with X-Men Days of Future Past, and now we're to Apocalypse. Apocalypse. And it kind of starts uh, with the opening scene of the uh, the last scene mm -hmm. in uh, Days of Future Past, yeah. um, the kind of deleted scene, I guess. Yeah. Uh, we, we see how... Uh, apocalypse comes to comes yeah. to power right yeah uh, over in egypt they uh sh show basically his followers and it's not exactly established what time period this is mm -hmm. so th i had the feeling this was supposed to be in the past quite a bit and they show him basically he has to go through a procedure every now and then where basically he transfers his powers into a new body and then stuff goes wrong there and then it flashes forward basically kind of giving you a little bit of a taste of what the apocalypse kind of character is so he kind of wakes up in the early 1980s which is yep. where we see all of yes. our heroes all of our x-men right now um and they all have pretty different lives from where we yeah last saw them in uh, days of future this past. is uh, roughly i think that 10 years was established uh, after days of future past um this sh movie kind of 80s there are a lot of 80s cultural references yeah, and is. stuff yeah uh but yeah it's basically showing how people have moved on Xavier's restarted the academy. He's got a lot of students there now. We meet Jean Grey this way. Uh, Cyclops, uh, Scott Summers, brought in by his brother, returning from uh, X-Men First Class. Mm -hmm. And basically, kind of a little bit, it gives a little bit of the flavor of what's going on at the academy and around the world as well. Of course, we see Eric and we see Magneto. Mm -hmm. he's, he's in a situation we didn't expect no, him to be No, no. He, he seemed to be doing pretty all right by himself. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and then... I don't want to spoil what happens. Okay. Movie gets dark. <laughs> yeah. Like real dark at the beginning. It lines up a little bit throughout. But yeah, it shows his life and then kind of fast forwards into the plot a little bit later after that. So Apocalypse, he wakes up and he gets four like awesome mutants to, to join his. Uh, yeah, they refer to him as Scions. I believe in the comics they refer to as Heralds. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically uh, the four horsemen of the Apocalypse. They even check that in the movie they reference that basically be his followers okay so we got apocalypse we got mm -hmm. his followers they're trying to take over the world the x-men are trying to stop them that's the basic basic plot basic right? gist yeah all right so we got that out of the way um kind of spoiler free for you hopefully if you saw the trailer yeah we didn't give much more than yeah. that was in the trailer um is this movie any good how do you define good <laughs> Um, is it better than Batman versus Superman, which we reviewed a couple months yeah, ago? Yeah. Um, yeah, because you know, this one didn't make me hate myself like Batman versus Superman. All right. Another question. Uh, is it better than civil war? No, absolutely not. <laughs> okay. No. So where did it go okay. wrong? Well, this, I think the framework for this movie is, uh, sound. I'll say the problem is, is there is just way too many characters and, not enough plot okay. because I think w they suffered the problem is if you come into the Avengers after having not seen Iron Man, Hulk, Iron Man 2, you know, Thor, Captain America, mm -hmm. you're going to seem kind of lost. And that's what this movie seemed like to me. They seemed like they shoved all of these characters in without properly establishing who they are. But we've seen these characters before, Sean. We've seen previous versions of these characters. Okay. Like we don't know how um, Sophie Turner's Jean Grey is now because we just saw her uh, as... Um, Fammy. F Famke Jansen yeah. as an adult. We haven't seen her as a teen. We don't know what her motivations, what how she is as a teen. We don't know how this Scott Summers is going to act. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, it's an entirely new timeline. So I think it would be served better to reestablish. We know that Scott Summers can shoot laser bolts out of his eyes. Well, we don't know much more about him, you know, especially with the way the X-Men movies handled him. But All right, so, so let me ask you a question. I, I understand what, what you're saying, and I understand, mm -hmm. but we're in the third chapter of this trilogy so what what would you have suggested not putting those characters in there i would i would suggested splitting this up You're giving like the because there are three distinct plot threads at the very start of the movie there's the academy there's apocalypse and then there's magneto mm -hmm. and they kind of converge through it i mean the academy it could have had its own movie where it established everyone in the academy established how xavier's running it mm -hmm. and 
like Jubilee, supposed to be a real hyped, a real big X Men character. She was in it for like ten seconds. Yeah, ten seconds disappeared. We of X Men Scions, which is Angel, Storm, uh, Psylocke, and Magneto. We know about Magneto. We know who Storm is from the comics. Anyone not familiar with comics probably not going to know much about Psylocke. I or, didn't. Yeah, Psylocke or uh, Angel. So could have established them more. Could have established more about how Eric's life in Poland, how he got there, what what caused him to change that way. And now, like there were a bunch of different ways that could have been set up. Mm-hmm. Like I, you know, just kind of. So, in your opinion, you think that she probably made like part one, part two, kind of thing, right? Yeah, uh, not necessarily even part one, part two. Just like X, uh, uh, Xavier's Academy, School for the Gifted, a movie about that, and then you know have that set up. Like maybe you could see glimpses into Eric in there, and maybe then you could spend the part early part of this movie establishing who Apocalypse's signs are, establishing who Apocalypse is, Apocalypse is, and not have to have taken the brunt of everything that was over at the Academy. The previous movie could have handled that. There was also a very long section in the middle of this movie that was just completely unnecessary. It's kind of like a different sidebar. Yeah, a different sidebar that had already been told in a way. That, you know, just kind of rehashing things that anyone who had watched the movies probably knew kind of a little bit about. Yeah. And it just basically just served a purpose for a later movie that really didn't even need to be there. So was there any any good points to this movie? I mean, I thought the acting was fine. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I didn't really have much problems with the acting. I thought, I mean, like I said, even though it was overstuffed, I think the basic story was fine. You know, it's nothing earth shattering or anything, but, you know, it was serviceable for what it was. CGI, how was it? Eh. <laughs> I mean, I, I had problems with the direction of this movie. Like, the directing. I just, a lot of camera shots weren't that good, I didn't think. And I thought a lot of the CGI, while okay in places, mm-hmm. it almost seemed a bit too showy. I, and I agree with you 100%. And this is probably a hard question for you, but what do you, because Brian Singer directed this mm-hmm. film. He also directed Days of Future Past. He yes. directed X-Men and X-Men 2. So mm-hmm. he's familiar yeah. with the material. What do you think he... Do you think he was trying to get too cute with, with stuff or what? Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know because I had a lot of the because I had a lot of the problems about with X Men Days of Future Past as well. I liked it. I, I liked mean, it. I know I, I'm talking about the problems with his directing oh, and okay. the CGI. Yeah, I okay. liked the movie as well. It's just I I don't I can't really put my finger on it. It's just it seemed off in a lot of ways and seemed okay. overly mm, overly cinematic, which is going to sound weird to say. Just it just it seemed like it's saying. Yo, we're a CGI movie. See all the CGI, how awesome that is. Yeah. It didn't seem real integrated into the world as well. Did this movie have heart to you? It had you, heart in places. I think this movie had a lot of heart with Eric and, and yeah. Magneto's character, but I think it was lacking in, in a lot of different yeah, lo- people. The, like the apocalypse plot is, I understand what they're going for. It could have been executed better. I mean, like I said, more time establishing who apocalypse is instead of just Yo, this old mutant. That's all we know about him. That's all we're going to tell about him. <laughs> right, right. Um, so do you think it's worth people's time? Do you think it's worth people's money to go see this in theaters? In theaters? You know, if you like X-Men, sure, it's worth it. Okay. I mean, you're going to want to see these characters on the screen. And uh, I think it was a good establishment. Uh, again, I think another movie would have been better just by themselves for the kids, Jean Grey, Cyclops, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler, really good in this movie. Yeah. Really like Nightcrawler. Uh, and some of the others at the Academy. Quicksilver was in it again? Yeah, Quicksilver was in it again. He did Quicksilver, he thinks. I, I love Quicksilver, man. And, you know, I th- out of any out of all the characters that was, was in this movie, his character got the most response again. Yeah, you and Sabrina quite fond of Quicksilver. He was awesome. You guys were laughing during that. He was awesome. Let's just put it that way. Um, So, with all this said, if they make X Men Four First Class, so you're gonna watch it again? Are you gonna yeah, watch it? I'll, I'll watch it. Sure. Okay. I'll right. probably go see a new Batman Superman movie again. That's just something <laughs> crazy. All right, the movie's called X Men Apocalypse. You can find it in theaters. Uh, Sean, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Always appreciate you. Uh, we're not going anywhere. We're coming back with Jake and Kadem, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna get our hands dirty with the prequel trilogy of Star Wars. It's coming your way next on KWOC.